today and uh, just looking forward to having a nice picnic together afterwards indoor picnic indoor <laughs> picnic <laughs> so uh, uh, let's ch check our prayer request Larry did you have a prayer request for you or just saying hi doing some stretching you have a prayer oh no just a second we'll give one of the ch kids a chance if they want to though okay um, a prayer request. Crinkles. The crinkles, yes. And, and Minoka's mother was chosen to go into hospice care. So another, another thing thrown into their lives. Yes. More stress. What do you want? Liz, Lizzie, are you have a prayer request or do you want to ring the bell? Or just saying hi? Ring the bell? You can go ring the bell. Okay, I'm going to take a few more prayer requests. Sterling? You... Um, I have a prayer request. Okay. What do you, what do we, should we pray for today? Pray for God that made this whole entire state. Yes, we thank God who made a yeah. whole entire state, and the, the world, the universe. Yeah. And Sean, yes, your son Sean, who's home. So, other prayer requests. Linda. Linda. There, yep. Yeah. Uh, all right. The kids on their honeymoon, traveling, that they stay on the right, left side of the road. <laughs> uh, <laughs> So, um, okay, no other prayer requests. All right, girls, head on down to the bell. Get on ready on page 596. A hymn, our opening hymn, hymn number 596. Okay. We can stand.
was uh, sing four verses of all Christians who've been baptized. All Christians who have been baptized, who know the God of heaven, and in whose daily life is Christ, the name of Christ once given, consider now what God has done, the gifts he gives to everyone, baptized into Christ Jesus. our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and you forgive the iniquity of my sin. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them, and I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor, sinful being. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office, as I called an ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead, and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all of your sins, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our intro it verses are uh, from verses from Psalm twenty six. From Psalm twenty six. O oh Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. Vindicate me, O oh Lord, for I have walked in my integrity. Prove me, O Lord, and try me. Yes, my heart and my mind. I wash my hands in innocence and go around your altar, O Lord. So I may be exceeding aloud and telling all your wondrous deeds. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now. 
of your house. There's more besides, and that's not all. 
talk about me. Anytime you please, you can talk about me. Anytime you please, I'll talk about you down on my knees. All my sins are washed away. I've been redeemed. Uh, I have another song next week. Follows the same music, but it's a little silly. You can't get to heaven on roller skates. So, uh, so next week we'll do that. Uh, now we'll turn to our readings and hear the scriptures that have been assigned for today. The Old Testament lesson is from Isaiah chapter 29, verses 11 through 19. The vision of all this has become to you like the words of a book that is sealed. When men give it to one who can read, saying, read this, he says, I cannot, for it is sealed. And when you give the book to one who cannot read, saying, read this, he says, I cannot read. And the Lord said, because this people draw near with their mouth and honor me with their lips, while their hearts are far from me, and their fear of me is a commandment taught by men. Therefore, behold, I will again do wonderful things with this people, with wonder upon wonder, and the wisdom of their wise men shall perish, and the discernment of their discerning men shall be hidden. Ah, you who hide deep from the Lord your counsel, whose deeds are in the dark, and who say, Who sees us? Who knows us? You turn things upside down. Shall the potter be regarded as the clay, that the thing made should say of its maker, He did not make me? Or the thing formed say of him who formed it, He has no understanding. It is not yet a very little while until Lebanon shall be turned into a fruitful field, and the fruitful field shall be regarded as a forest. In that day the deaf shall hear the words of a book, and out of their gloom and darkness the eyes of the blind shall see. The meek shall obtain fresh joy in the Lord, and the poor among mankind shall exult in the Holy One of Israel. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle lesson is from Ephesians chapter 5, verses 22 through 33. Wives, submit to your own husbands as to the Lord, for the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, his body and is himself its Savior. Now as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit in everything to their husbands. Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her, that he might sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of water with the word, so that he might present the church to himself in splendor, without spot or wrinkle, or any such thing, that she might be holy and without blemish. In the same way, husbands should love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself, for no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it, just as Christ does the church, because we are members of his body. Therefore a man shall leave his father and mother and hold fast to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. This mystery is profound, and I am saying that it refers to Christ and the church. However, let every one of you love his wife as himself, and let the wife see that she respects her husband. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. to St. Mark, the seventh chapter, beginning at the first verse. This uh, picks up right after the feeding of the 5,000 and the bread of life that we've been in for the last month. So, 
When the Pharisees gathered to Jesus with some of the scribes who had come from Jerusalem, they saw that some of his disciples ate with hands that were defiled, that is, unwashed. Uh, for the Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they wash their hands, holding to the tradition of the elders. And when they come from the marketplace, they do not eat unless they wash. And there were many other traditions that they observed, such as the washing of cups and pots and copper vessels and dining couches. And the Pharisees and the scribes asked him, Why do your disciples not walk according to the tradition of the elders, but eat with defiled hands? And he said to them, Well did Isaiah prophesy of you, hypocrites, as it is written, This people honors me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching the doctrines, the commandments of men. You leave the commandment of God and hold to the tradition of men. And he said to them, you have a fine way of rejecting the commandment of God in order to establish your tradition. For Moses said, Honor your father and your mother, and whoever reviles father or mother must surely die. But you say, If a man tells his father or mother, Whatever you would have gained from me is Corbin, that is, given to God, then you no longer permit him to do anything for his father or mother thus making void the word of God by your tradition that you have handed down. And many such things you do. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to thee, O Christ. We'll confess our faith with the Apostles' Creed, page 192. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, Father Almighty, from thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. And our hymn of the day, 865, Lord, help us ever to retain.
How many of you have seen the sound of music? Almost everybody. I know it's getting a little old for, yeah, for the younger kids these days. But, uh, but uh, either, you know, there's obviously the very popular movie, but do, some people still do uh, play broad, you know, play, you know, live uh, play you know, adaptations of it. The, you know, the, so many of you are familiar with the story of Maria, right? How do you solve a problem like Maria, right? <laughs> How do they solve a problem like Maria? Well, they send her off, <laughs> uh, right? Yeah. Uh, to be the governess at the Van Von Trapp family home, right? And you remember how she how she first met you know, the family, how she first entered into the home and was introduced to first the Baron, and how did the Baron you know, how did the Baron call all the children out to to meet her, and uh, with a whistle, a, a horn pipe, because because he was in the navy. And in the Navy in those days, before the electronics and the loudspeakers you know, that they use today, well, they still have horns and whistles and things in the Navy, but especially in those, that day, you know, every, every command and it had to be done with a whistle because then it could be heard around the ship or in a big house. If so, that's what he was used to on the ship in the Navy. So that's what he, <laughs> that's how he kept discipline in his house. And the children, how did they come you know, down? Yes, at attention, right? Yes, sir. Here as directed, sir, right? <laughs> uh, and then he went on, proceeded to try to teach Maria, you know, the whistle for each of the individual children. So that she, you know, if she wanted to call one of them, she could blow the whistle for just one of them, and, and or the, you know, the whistle to summon all of them all at once, right? Uh, is that how God intended for us to honor our father and our mother, our parents? You know, uh, a hundred years ago, that might a lot of people might have agreed with that, huh? You know, come running, stand at attention, maybe even a salute to say, "Sir, yes, sir," and "Yes, ma'am," "No, ma'am," right? Uh, uh, now, how does the family, the children? How do they behave later on in the story? How do they behave after Maria and the Baron get married and are coming home from the honeymoon? Do they all line up at the door and say, welcome home, sir, welcome home, ma'am? No, that's not how they behave at that part in the story, is it? They run to greet their mother and father and welcome them home, right? Uh, have they they lost all family discipline? Are they now dishonoring their father and their new mother? Uh, uh, well, uh, no, actually, they love their father even more now than they did before, don't they? And, and they are, in a more informal way, trusting and honoring their father and their new mother even more than when they first met Maria, right? So, so what was it that Maria brought into this house and into this family that changed it in this way? Music. Well, that's the song, that is the name of the song, the mute story, but that is not what changed the family, is it? Love. Love, right. It, it was love, because I know music teachers who Pay attention or else. You people are never going to learn this song if you don't do what I say. Yeah, right? You can have music without love and joy. All right? Uh, it is not the music itself that brought honor, you know, you know, that, that led the children to honor their father more. It's not the music by itself that brought joy into the house and into the family. It was, it was love. You know, it was it, through the music and you know through the love in the music that the Baron was able to work through the, the grief of losing his first wife and then to 
sh start showing his love to his children and that the children learn that their father actually did love and care for them and not just, you know, wanted, you know not just wanted to discipline them and get them, in, you know, in line. Uh, and they all loved Maria because she brought this love with the music. I mean, the music was an important part of their lives together. But, um, and so then as, you know, then as we get to the end of the movie, uh, the children actually trust and honor their parents when it becomes critical, life and death, right? They keep quiet, they keep hidden when, when the soldiers are right on the other side of the, of the gate. You know, and they don't call up, hey, boyfriend, right? What? Right? She keeps her mouth shut for the family. Yes, as I said, you can, you know, and, and we know, not all music is loving, is it? Uh, you can have music without love or joy and trust and those things that bring honor to the family. Uh, you can have honor without the formal discipline, right? Uh, now there still has to be, you know, some discipline. You still have to listen to me and trust me, you know. Um, but but uh, love and faith and trust are the foundation of the commandments. And that's where the Pharisees get off track in, in our gospel story today. They're keeping the commandments. Outwardly, they look really good, you know. These are really good, upstanding people, you know, uh, even, even uh, because they've even added to the commandments. Now, if you say, you can keep 10 rules, I'll keep 20, right? And if you can keep 20 rules, I'll keep 600 and, what, how many? 683 or something. Uh, and, and not only that, I'll add to those to make sure I never even get close to breaking those Commandments, right? If you say quiet time is at 10 o'clock, I'll shut off my music at 6. Uh, um, uh, if some is, some is good, then more is better, right? They, not, they wash their hands, and then they wash their tables, and their chairs, and their pots, and pans, and the dishes, and, and uh, all of that, right? That's actually good stuff, right? If you walk into a restaurant, and the tables aren't clean, are you, uh, are you gonna stay? Uh, if, if they try to hand you food on dirty dishes, are you gonna say, oh good, thank you. I love it, you know, best restaurant ever. No, you're like, uh, I don't think so, right? Hey, take this back. Um, yeah, we don't disagree with washing hands, tables, dishes, uh, good things. We encourage people to clean up, uh, to avoid germs and sickness and all that yucky stuff, right? But the Pharisees took God's law and added to them and said, if you don't do all of this the way we do it, and the way we say to do it, then you're not a good person. You're not a, per a child of God. You're not a real Israelite. You won't go to heaven. Instead of saying cleanliness is close to godliness, they would say cleanliness is godliness, right? Not, you know, not that anyone could even wash their hands or keep clean enough anyways, right? If you can wash your hands till your skin's coming off and you haven't gotten rid of all the dirt. You know, there's still stuff that you miss. You know, uh, the hygiene laws are good. You know, is, I, want, I want my waiter and waitress to wash their hands before they go back to work, right? Uh, but people still need forgiveness. And, and, we, and we ultimately need to be cleaned by God to actually be holy and righteous and sanctified, right? Not just by washing our hands and following the commandments. Now God loves us, and because He loves us, He wants to teach us how to live a good life, in, including being clean. But the most important part is love. Right? Love for God, and then love for each other. Now the Pharisees would probably would have fit in really well a few years ago, right? They would have been down at the stores. Hey, get that mask on. 
or get out of here. What's wrong with you? Go to jail. All right? They would fit in real good. You know, you're not using enough hand sanitizer. Uh, but the loving thing to do is to point out you know, to people, you know, oh, is there a problem? You know, if you, you know, if you wear your mask better, it will help protect you a little better. You know, if, you know, if you wash your hands and things, <laughs> you know, we got really carried away with washing and sanitizing for a little while, didn't we? <laughs> Uh, and then now we've we've learned that maybe we didn't need to do quite all of that. Uh, yes, it may have helped us to keep from getting sick and spreading germs to a point, but in the end, people still got sick who wore their masks all the time, and people still got sick who washed their hands and used lots of hand sanitizer. In the end, we have to trust in the Lord. You know, I have to trust in the Lord. He's the one that watches over us and takes care of us. And as Jesus points out, this isn't the only law that the Pharisees have added to and changed and, and well, twisted. You know, he discusses this other situation of, of Korban. Korban was a, a gift or pledge that they could make to the, to the temple or synagogue, well, to the Lord. I don't know the exact specifics, but, but it's not important exactly. You know, children, adult children, could go to the temple, to the priest or rabbi, and make a pledge to give money to the church, you know, in the name of their parents. <laughs> Today you'd get a nice big certificate, right? A, a gift has been made in your honor, in your name. Uh, congratulations. And then you can take it and give it to your parents and say, here you go. Sorry about the rent and the medicine and the food and all those other things, but I can't give you any more money because I gave it all to God. Good luck, right? God bless you. Now, so Jesus isn't opposed to giving offerings to the Lord because uh, we know there's times when he himself gave money you know, at the temple. You know, but this is a loophole that they had designed to put together so that children didn't have to honor their parents. Now they could have been, you know, respectful and say, Mother, Father, I don't have any more money for you because I gave it all to the church. But that's not the loving thing. That's not what God intended when he said, honor your father and your mother. The, you know, and that's the root of the problem. Not loving and caring for each other. Because, as, as Jesus points out, love is the basis of all the commandments. We just need a little bit more help to learn what that means. Uh, not, just, not just in word and action and in lip service, going through the motions, but loving God and loving our neighbors and our parents. And when we love them, and then we... We don't want to hurt them. You know, and maybe we need a little instruction about what it means not to hurt each other. Well, not, you know, and not to misuse God's name. Or, uh, or how to not spread germs and disease by washing our hands. You know, and, and some of those things. <coughs> you know, out of love for ourselves first, so we don't get sick and so we don't spread it to, to others. But trust in God, ultimately. I mean, God did, you know, there were rules of the Old Testament about washing, washing hands and washing pots and things that were, were good hygiene. You know, confirmed by our modern science about how not to spread disease and sickness. You know. And, but, but God does not want us to just legally follow the rules of washing our hands. You know, but to love our neighbors and have concern for their health and their well-being. And for our parents too, right? So may the, the love of God, you know, who has washed away all of your sins and filled you with the Holy Spirit, may that love flow out to the, your neighbors, your parents, and your family, to all people, and even back to God. Not just in words and in actions and in lip service, but love that, that flows, you know, love that is shown 
in all that you say and do, and even, even maybe in your music and singing. May the peace of God that surpasses all understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We turn to the offertory created me. I invite you to stand as we sing together and our offerings are brought forward to the altar. That we should at all times and in all places 
Give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who out of love for his fallen creation humbled himself by taking on the form of a servant, becoming obedient unto death, even death upon a cross. Risen from the dead, he has freed us from eternal death and given us life everlasting. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying,
body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you in true faith, to life everlasting, depart in peace and joy, your sins are forgiven. Amen. Welcome to the Lord's table. Take, you mean, this is the true body of Christ given in the death for you. Take and drink the very blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, shed on the cross for the forgiveness of all of your sins. The eating and drinking of the very body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve your true faith, to life everlasting, for in peace and joy your sins are forgiven. Amen. On page 199, singing the song of Song of Simeon, I invite you to stand as we sing together. Five hundred eighty-five. 
abide. Lord Jesus Christ, with us abide. We'll sing four verses of good today. together looking forward to our picnic uh, inside picnic in a few minutes so um, a good wedding last week yeah really really good wedding we danced and sang yeah <laughs> yeah and uh, enjoyed the beautiful scenery yeah uh, so uh, and this week let's see any announcements we need for this week I think it's pretty normal week, Wednesday, Bible study, <laughs> as long as they don't have our streets shut down <laughs> uh, for the road construction. Um, it's, uh, it's in the, should check the bulletin, right? So I think that's the most thing. Uh, we need to pick a, a day. You know, it's almost September, so we'll need to pick a day and discuss what would be a good day to do our highway cleanup for the fall. So, uh, sometime you know in September, October, early October <coughs> usually is better than later. But uh, so let's uh, we don't have to do, pick that today, but uh, think about that. Um, and. Uh, Let's see, September, next Sunday is September 1st. So, so the other things, uh, they did pick a date uh, planning. There should be a poster here soon for LWML Fall Rally at East Wenatchee, October 12th. So, uh, looking forward to that. If you can make it, and then anything else. We're good? Um, then, now let's, let's say our uh, meal prayer. Uh, before, uh, if, so you don't have to wait, the rest of you don't have to wait for me. You can go through and pick up your food and get started with lunch. Um, this is uh, at Camp Ortoa, they call the Superman Prayer. So you, I, I remember the, uh, there was kind of, here's this, kind of the song, it's Superman, dun da 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 Okay, so it goes, Thank you, Lord, for giving us food. Thank you, Lord, for giving us food. For the friends that we, food that we eat, and the friends that we meet, we thank you, Lord. All right? Like that? Ready? Thank you, Lord, for giving us food. 
us food. Thank you, Lord, for giving us food, for the food that we eat and the friends that we meet. We thank you, Lord. Yes. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thank you.